Unemployment is expected to rise. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to have a look at an article discussing, well, the jobless rate and the weakening economy here in Australia, or the weakened economy here in Australia. It's expected to rise. Before we have a look at this article from Yahoo, let's just have a look at the predictions from uh, trading economics. We can see here our unemployment rate is sitting at 4.9%, better than a lot of people expected. But what's interesting is this chart down here. So we've got the latest data, which will be coming out in a few days' time. Now, this will be the July unemployment rate. Previous figures were 4.9%, and the consensus and the trading economics forecast is 5%. They're, they're expecting the unemployment rate to go up to 5%, everyone. You can see the previous month, it beat expectations, and the month before that, it beat expectations again. And even trading economics is forecasting the September unemployment rate to keep going up to 5.2%. Now, what's interesting with any of these predictions is it doesn't really matter if it hits the predictions. What matters is if it does better or worse than the predictions. That's kind of how it works, everyone. So we're looking at 5.5% on the 19th. And then in September, oh, sorry. Uh, yes, in September. They're ex no, not in September. Uh, yes, in September, they're expecting... 5.2%. So in a couple of months, 5.2% unemployment. So let's have a look at this. The rapid decline in the unemployment rate to a decade low looks set to come to an end, a casualty of multiple virus restrictions across the country in recent weeks. And well, we've just, just announced they've got lockdowns or curfews in Victoria, everyone. Yeah, fun and games. The jobless rate has dropped for eight straight months. Remember that, and we've just had, I'll just remind you, our first recession for 28 years, and unemployment has been dropping for eight months with a pandemic, lockdowns, no international travel, tourism industry in shambles, but, you know, a significant amount of government spending resulting in more debt than we've ever had. I, I wonder, wonder what could be going on. It's all juiced up, guys. However... It is now set to spike about above 5% again in coming months with the economy slumping into a downturn. And here's, here's the question. Will we have another recession? Now, the definition of a recession, if we're talking about that, let me just bring that up for those of you. There we go. Definition of a recession is two quarters of, or a period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fall in GDP in two successive quarters. Now, GDP isn't the best measure of the economy, isn't the best measure of how things are going. But generally, you know, the trend, you're picking up two quarters of it going negative, going backwards, that ain't a good sign. And that's the question, will we hit another two quarters of negative GDP growth? So will we hit another recession? Will we have a double dip recession? The Australian Bureau of Statistics will release the Crucial Labour Force Report for July on Thursday. Economists' forecasts centre on a rise in the jobless rate to 5% in July, but with further increases to 5.5% over the next few months. So these predictions are even more harsh than trading economics. AMP Capital Chief Economist Shane Oliver is expecting a 50,000 50, fall in the number of people employed in July, and mainly New South Wales, which broadened its Greater Sydney lockdown to across the state on Saturday. He is expecting a much bigger impact showing up in August. Ultimately, employment is expected to fall by around 300,000, Dr Oliver said. However, the Reserve Bank of Australia expects as vaccination rates increase and lockdowns become less necessary. Even if they become less necessary, does that mean they will not happen? That, that's, that's the real question that we should all consider even if we get a vaccination rate at 80% and lockdowns become net, net less necessary and we can open up the economy, will that happen? Will there be calls for lockdowns for other stupid things? You know, Housing deposits. Oh, the world is coming to an end in, in 11 months. Didn't they say that last year? Shouldn't the world be coming to an end because of the environment? Better lock down. Prince Charles said so. 
The unemployment rate will resume its downtrend, reaching 4.25% by the end of 2022 and 4% a year later. 4% a year later, that's what they're predicting. The RBA sees a lower unemployment rate and higher wages growth as key figures to bring back inflation to some normal normality and sustainably between the 2 and 3% target, which would allow it to lift interest rates from emergency levels. Now, for those of you that, that haven't bothered keeping track of our cash rate, well, it's, it's, it's 0.1%, okay? 3% used to be considered the emergency rate. What we have here is not emergency rates. 3% is emergency rates. What we have here is utterly bonkers, insane rates. No, wait, actually, no, that's negative. That's negative. We're between utterly bonkers and insane. We're, we're, let's call it Baldrick levels. Okay, we're at Baldrick. You can tell I've been watching some Black Adder. We're at bald, Baldrick levels of cash rate. We're not at emergency rates. So it does not expect these circumstances to be met before 2024. Wage growth figures due this week will confirm there is still a long way to go before meeting the RBA's desired level of 3%. Well, it's not going to help if... Jobs are getting, like we saw CBA, outsourcing jobs over to India because we've got a worker shortage here. I think we've got a skill shortage here brought on by the reducing economic complexity in our country. So no incentives to start businesses, to start, (laughs) to do anything other than buy houses. The wage index for the June quarter, a gauge used by the RBA and Treasury to measure wage growth, is released on Wednesday. Economists expect wage growth, wages to have grown 6 0.6% 0.6% in the June quarter for an annual rate of 1.9%, up from one5 in the March quarter. The RBA will release minutes of its August 3 board meeting on Tuesday, although they're unlikely to offer up much new. Since that gathering, it, is, it has released its quarterly statement on monetary policy, and Governor Philip Lowe has appeared for its sixth monthly grilling before federal politicians. Meanwhile, Australian shares look set for a soft opening on Monday after Wall Street finished up Friday with the smallest of gains. The US S&P 500 rose 7.17 points to 4,468. Dow Jones Industrial Average added 15.53 points to 35,515.38. And the Nasdaq picked up 6.64 points to 14,822.9. Australian share futures were 9 points lower at 7,536. It will be a modest retreat from Friday's record close, which the, with the benchmark S&P ASX 200 index having ended 40.7 points or 0.54% higher at 7,628.9 on expectations of further bumper earnings results this week. Results include JB Hi-Fi on Monday, BHP on Tuesday, calls, and CSL on Wednesday. So there we have it, everyone. What's, well, jobless is, rate is expected to rise as the economy weakens. What is the solution or the takeaway to this? Well, there's a few things to consider. If the RBA is indeed correct with their their predictions that unemployment will eventually head down to 4% by 2022 and then wages will go up, that that will necessarily be a good thing. And of course, they'll have to adjust the cash rate away from emergency levels. But what if during that process, you know, even if let's let's pretend that they're completely right, that's going to happen. But if you're, you know, one of those people that are going to lose their job in that intermittent period before there's increasing demand and we're seeing already some jobs being unfulfilled and work getting sent off offshore what can you do i think the best chance is to look to diversify your skill set to have a variety of income streams or to be able to well, get a variety of roles which is harder harder said than done particularly with the good old learn to code meme but then all it jobs getting sent overseas i think a lot of it's going to be front-facing client focused but that as well is going to be interesting now with if everything's being done remotely, call centers, client-focused, can all be done overseas. So what's, what is the solution here? On an individual level, diversify your income stream and prepare. On a macro-national level, we need to increase the economic complexity of the country. Look at reducing the disincentives for people to invest in businesses, to employ, and to create jobs in Australia. I think there needs to be a move away from the interventionist drive and push of our government. But that really needs a culture shift. Hopefully we can start to see that emerge because of all of these people now starting to take an interest in politics here in Australia for some strange reason. What do you reckon?
Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>